Hey everybody, and welcome back to our series on the five things you need to use multitracks. I have, I have tons and tons of links in the description of this video uh, because there's a lot of content that we have discussed so far and will discuss over the next few weeks. Now, if you're gonna use stems, multitracks on stage, there's five things you need, five essential things you need, no matter your budget, no matter how long you've been using tracks. And in this series, we're doing a deep dive into each of those. So to start in the description, you'll find the introduction to the five things you need to use multitracks. It was a episode of Behind the Space Bar podcast that you probably would enjoy if you're into this sort of content that I release every Monday, 10 a.m. Central, it's kind of like a crossover event. Um, um, uh, I introduced this concept on Behind the Space Bar. We're bringing it over to our gear content um, that I post every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central. Now, last week, we talked about the first thing that you need to use uh, multi-tracks on stage, and that's a computer. And I offered my suggestions. I'm a Mac guy, so I don't have tons of experience on Windows machines. So I offered my um, uh, a couple thoughts, I think it was four tips on um, how to choose a Mac to use on stage. This week, we're going to talk about the second thing of the five things you need to use multi-tracks, and that is Ableton Live. Now, I want to pause for a second. Why do we have to use Ableton Live? Why not Digital Performer? Why not Pro Tools? Um, if you're a worship leader doing this in church, why not Prime or Playback? Well, I believe Ableton Live is the best software um, uh, for running tracks on stage for a few reasons. One, it was created for um, live performance of pre-recorded content. It was created for DJs. It gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom to uh, do things quickly, to make changes quickly. Uh, it gives you the, the freedom and flexibility to change key or tempo, jump around in your song really, really quickly. Um, now, there's some apps like Prime and Playback that allow you to do that as well too. Uh, and if you're a worship leader, those are apps you should definitely consider and look at. But I like using Ableton Live because it gives me control over the entire ecosystem. It's something that I can bring content from anywhere into, and it doesn't take me a long time to upload and wait for things to process. I just drag them into Ableton Live. Now, when it comes to Ableton versus uh, Pro Tools or Digital Performer or Logic or Studio One, those are all great softwares. And I would definitely not recommend running Pro Tools on stage or tracks, though I know a few people that have done it. Uh, you 100% need a redundant rig if you're using Pro Tools on stage for tracks. Uh, Digital Performer is a fantastic software that's that's really created for this specific use. Um, uh, Studio One has some really cool features that I like as well too. Uh, I would not use Logic to run tracks on stage. But here's in particular, um, I again, I, Ableton is made for um, live performance. It's made for, uh, or originally was created for live performance. It's made for um, uh, performing with pre-recorded content. I think it's very stable. I think it's very lean. It's light. It's easy to work with. It's easy to get started and gives you freedom and flexibility in using tracks. Now, I will say, let me give a little um, promotion here. I mean, it's my video, so I can talk about whatever I want to. Um, it, it does that really well if you follow a great framework and a great process. And that's stuff I teach on from studio to stage. And the first step in that process is uh, a great template for tracks. So you can head to from studio stage.com slash template. Sorry for the shameless promotion, but it's free from studio stage.com slash template. You can download my free tracks template as a way to get started with using tracks in Ableton Live. Uh, in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. Okay, so today we're talking about Ableton Live. Now, before we got into this five-part series, uh, we we did a couple of videos, three to four videos on using Ableton Live. Uh, and again, this video is going to be a quick kind of summation of those points. I've linked to them in the description in this video if you want to go further and dive into those. Uh, but let's let's dive into it. So number one, um, I would encourage you if you um, are trying to uh, pick Ableton Live, purchase Ableton Live, start with Live Light or purchase live intro. Now, Live Light comes for free with most hardware, software you're gonna buy. Um, uh, you'll find it bundled with MIDI controllers, audio interfaces you buy. So it's very possible you could get started with Live um, Light for free, which is really, really great. So that's a great way to get started. Um, if you haven't purchased an audio interface MIDI controller recently, or you did and it didn't come with Live Light, then consider purchase, purchasing Ableton Live intro. It'll be less than 100 US dollars when you do that. And uh, the reason I say start there is you want to figure out is the software for you? Is it is it right? Um, uh, I don't want you going and investing $800 or over $1,000 to get a push and get Ableton Live Suite only to find out that you don't enjoy the software, that you don't enjoy the way it works. You don't enjoy the way it looks. It, it doesn't resonate with you. Um, it doesn't speak your language. You don't speak its language. Um, don't devote a lot to this until you know for sure if it's for you, right? And I think the best way to do that is to start with Live Light for free or purchase Ableton Live intro. Now, from there, what's really, really great, 
Tip two is you don't have to stay on those. You can upgrade to standard or sweet. Uh, and tip two is, is take advantage of upgrade pricing. So there's specific upgrade pricing to you if you have Ableton Live Live or Ableton Live Intro. You can log into your account at ableton.com. If you haven't done that yet, then you probably haven't been using your copy of Live, but create your account. You can log in and you can see the specific upgrade pricing available to you. Tip three, if you are a student, a teacher at an institution, or a From Studio to Stage student, you're signed up uh, on From Studio to Stage, then you qualify for EDU pricing. It's another great way that you can get a discount on Ableton Live. Check the link in the description of this video to figure that out, to understand that. Um, and I've got links to uh, upgrade, purchase Ableton Live in the description of this video that when you do that, help support the creation of content like this. It means a lot to me if you do that. Uh, so uh, tip one, start with Live Light, Live Intro. Tip two, uh, check out upgrade pricing before you purchase um, uh, uh, you know, standard or suite uh, outright get it with upgrade pricing. Tip three, if you're a teacher or student or you are signed up for from studio to stage, um, then you get EDU pricing for that. Tip four is if you're gonna use tracks, that's what we're talking about here, you're gonna need, uh, at least need to get Ableton Live Standard. And the way you're gonna get that is through that upgrade pricing or through EDU upgrade pricing, right? That's that's super important. The reason you wanna get standard is it removes the track count limitation that's in Ableton Live Lite and Ableton Live Intro. So again, uh, um, uh, Live Lite and Intro, the best way to get started, the best way to figure out if it's for you, but if you're really gonna run tracks in live, you gotta get beyond that 16 uh, track count limitation because you're gonna have stems that have 16, 17 tracks. Uh, and the way I teach running tracks is not to create 16 and limit yourself to that. Um, uh, so. Uh, the easiest way to run tracks on stage using Ableton Live, you should get standard. Okay, tip number five though, if you wanna use a plugin like Setlist, um, uh, like Ableset, um, if you wanna use a plugin um, like Taz Lite, Taz Pro, then you're gonna need Max for Live. Max for Live uh, is a uh, add-on purchase that you could add on to standard, but at, at that point when you start to add on Max for Live, upgrade to Ableton Live Suite. Right, that's something that I highly suggest. Uh, if you want to use some extra plugins, there's uh, plugins and tools and utilities that do a lot of really cool things. That most of those require Max or Live. That's when you want to upgrade. Now, as a bonus, I use all the sounds, the audio effects, MIDI effects in Ableton Live, which are amazing. I, I know you've got plugins. I know you love your plugins, but try the Ableton Live effects. They're native. They sound incredible. Uh, there's incredible presets, incredible live packs, particularly that come with Ableton Live Suite, so it's worth it. But again, if you want tracks, tip four, get to standard. Uh, if you want uh, to use Max for Live devices, some really cool stuff, then get to suite. But again, remember tips two and three. The best way to get there is to upgrade. Um, or to use that EDU pricing. And the best place to start with tip one is Ableton Live Live or Ableton Live Intro. Okay, I know you love gear. That's why you're watching this. I love gear too. Uh, I wanna continue our series next week as we talk about choosing an audio interface. I'm gonna share some tips, some suggestions I have um, on uh, how to choose an audio interface. That's all next week. But in order to see that, uh, you've gotta make sure you hit subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as we post it. Uh, and I don't just post new content every Saturday. I post new content every single day. It's ridiculous. I've lost my mind. I understand, but it's fun. I love doing it. 10 a.m. Central every single day here on the channel. Channel. Hit subscribe so you see it. Um, hey, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week as we talk about choosing an audio interface for live performance. Um, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your weekend, rest of your week, whenever you're watching this. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye.